if you play this game you'll be poor spiritual if you play this game this and this and this will begin to happen in your life and understanding the operations of the wicked spirit Continue this message from part one. This is uh, the unfaithful still world that we are talking about. And I'm talking to my fellow Christian. And I'm praying for you that God will give you the grace to be a trustworthy and faithful still world in the name of Jesus. This message will transform your life. This message will bring you closer to God in Jesus' name. Don't be a prodigal still world. Who goes ahead to waste and squander his money? You wandered out of palace as the child of God when you are once a Christian and suddenly you wandered out of Christianity into the world. You backslided. You backslided because of one reason or the other. You are not a trustworthy steward. You are a prodigal steward. A backsliding Christian is a prodigal steward. Anything that will make you to leave the house of God, to stop serving God, to turn your back on God. Anything, any conditions, any situations in this world that will make you to out of being a Christian, uh, from being a Christian, you become a Muslim. Or from, from being a Christian, you become an idol worshiper. Or from being a Christian, you backslided and go back into the world. You have left the palace because the house of God is a palace. You have left the palace where everything is available. And woe unto you, if God forgive you, you couldn't come back early or on time before you die. You will rest, you will end up in hell fire. Don't be a prodigal steward. Luke chapter 15 from verse 11 to 32. You can go through it yourself. Luke 15 from verse 11 to 32. Three, are you a dishonest and deceitful steward? Are you a dishonest and deceitful steward? It's a question I'm asking you because we read the Bible passage, the Bible passage together in the book of Luke. How deceitful, how deceptive the steward was. And what the Bible says in verse 2. Let's read that place again. Luke chapter 16 verse 2. Luke 16 verse 2. And the Bible says, And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? When the master of the house night came back and heard everything that unjust and unfaithful steward did, he called him to account. I'm hearing that you did so, so, so thing. They employed you as a manager and you are stealing money. And you are a Christian. You are stealing money from your company. They gave you money to start a business. And this business is something that that money is enough for you to start where? And you start using that money to carry women around. You start using that money to drink alcohol. You start using that money to carry friends to bar, drink and smoke, carry women to hotels and sleep with them. And you squander the money. And then the remaining one out of, out of righteous life, you bring them out or you bring them back to the booze, to the person who gave you the money and say, well... I, I couldn't do this business. The, the, the business is not going well. And you are giving flimsy excuses. You will give account. And this man here, he was called to account. And, the say, and he said, and he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship. For thou mayest be no longer steward. Give an account of your stewardship. Are you a worker in the house of God? Are you an usher in the house of God? Are you a minister in the house of God? 
What is it you are doing for God? Are you an instrumentalist? Are you a choir member? Are you a choir mistress? Are you faithful in your still worship? Or are you a dishonest and deceitful steward? It's a question you need to answer yourself. Are you faithful in your position in the house of God? What are you doing? Are you the type that you do eye service? You only work when the man of God is coming. So the man of God can see, ah, you are hard working. At the presence of the servant of God, you are doing eye service. But when he leaves, you know you are a chameleon. You know you are a, a hypocrite. Is that kind of steward that you are? Are you a dis dishonest steward? I'm asking you. Ask that the question yourself. As this man did. The Bible is saying that if you are not faithful, if you are not honest, if you are not truthful, if you are not true in your service in the house of God, you could lose that position. Many people are working in the house of God. We are right spiritually. God does not recognize them. Because the possession, the position they hold in the church as usher, complaining and murmuring, gossiping and backbiting, anger and malice, hatred and jealousy, wrath and, and, the, and the all kinds of evil thought and imagination have already destroyed their work. The record of their work has been cleared. You are working as an usher, but you are complaining about your work. You are complaining about the man of God. You are complaining about everything in the house of God. You are working as a, a waiter, as, an, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a minister. You are working as a deacon. You are working as a choir mistress. But you are gossiping your fellow brethren. You are backbiting. You are keeping malice. Your work has no record. It is possible that all the work we have been doing, you, 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 are, you, are, you have no record in heaven. There is no record for you. Because you use your mouth and, your, and the kind of life you are living to destroy the work. You are walking in the house of God, but you are gossiping the man of God. You are talking against your pastors. You are talking against the ministers. You are a dishonest steward. God will not accept your work. I really need you to understand that the stewardship goes beyond what you read in that passage. He's talking also about Christians. He's talking about Christians. Your service at the house of God. What are you doing with the gift that God has given you? What are you doing with the gift that God has given you as a minister, as a child of God? Are you using it to make money? Are you selling it? You are using it to make fortunes out of people who are even poor? Remember that the gift you received is free of charge. And you are going to give account of how you use the gift because you are a steward in the house of God. Three, don't be a steward who doesn't share and give. In point two, you can write down Luke 16 for verse 1 to 13, the place we read. Don't be a steward who is so, so stingy. You don't give, you don't share your things. You are so tight-fisted and stingy you give account of the money god has given you because he gave you that money for a reason and if you are stingy with your money you will give account of it four are you a steward that love money too much remember we read about love of money there excuse me are you a steward that love money so much i want you to know that you will give account of that as well first timothy 6 verse 10 1 Timothy 6 verse 10. Let us read 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. And the Bible says here, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted, coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Let me explain something on this very point. Are you a steward that love money too much? You love money so much that you you went you go to the extent of doing money ritual, selling your soul to the devil, becoming a satanist, a ritualist. And in the end of doing that, 
you are unable to escape, and now devil has trapped you into his snare, and now you try to escape and he threatens you with death. If you leave, I will kill you. Many people have been, have been plunged into sorrows because of money. A lot of people have lost their family, their children, their daughters, their sons, their brothers, their sisters to money. Because they love money too much, they kill their own family members to make money. And eventually, even their own lives were taken. Only very few of them escaped and they are allowed today to tell the story. Love of money means you are not a faithful steward. Any Christian, any person, whether you are a Christian or not, that loves money too much, cannot be a faithful and true steward. It is not possible. Six. Are you prioritizing earthly wealth over eternal treasure as a steward? Are you prioritizing earthly wealth over eternal treasure as a steward? Is a question you need to answer. Let us read this place in the book of Matthew chapter 6, Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Matthew 6, 19 to 21. The Bible says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Verse 20 now. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through now still, verse 21, the last place, but not the least. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Do you love money more than God? Do you love money more than the things of heaven? Do you love money more than your children? Do you love money more than your brothers and sisters? Do you prefer money over serving God? Over doing the will of God? It means that you are such a steward that prioritizes material things over the treasures of heaven. You are not worthy to be a steward in the house of God. You are not worthy to be a steward of God. If you are the type that you value material things over the things of this world. You see, some parents, they are so rich. And then when their daughter falls in love with a poor person, they don't want their daughter to marry a man from a poor family because they don't believe in they don't believe in the idea that a rich man can marry from a poor family and they share their wealth and riches to reach out to the poor people. They don't believe in it. They believe that a rich man must marry from a rich family and a rich sister must marry a rich man so that the wealth can continue to boom and boom. That is very, very nonsensical thing. That is the mentality of the worldly people. The mentality of people that do not know God. That is the mentality of people that cherish material things over the things of heaven. That is the mentality of people that value money even more than the happiness of their children. Because they don't want their children to marry out of love. They want their children to marry out of their own plan for them. But it doesn't work like that. It doesn't make you a true steward. And parents, I must tell you that you are just a caretaker. You are just caretakers over your children on earth. You are not their father. Their father is God. God just gave them to you to train them in his way and show them the way to come back to him when they leave this world. You will still give account to how you train your children as parents. If you are not a good steward as parents, if you are not good stewards as parents, you will give account of how you bring up your children. Because God has appointed you over their lives to show them the way of God, to train them where. And many parents today, they don't even care where their daughters marry because they don't know God. They don't know God is a pity. Seven, accountability before God. As a steward, we must account before God. God is going to call us to account. Just like the, the faithful steward was called to account, to give account of what he did with the assignment that his master appointed him. Every child of God will account 
As a Christian, you are calmed how you live your life. How you are living your life right now, does it please God or you are doing it to only satisfy your flesh? The Bible says you will account, God will call you to account how you live your life. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 2. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 2. 8. Seeking first the kingdom of God as a steward. This is what we are supposed to do as stewards in the house of God. Seeking the kingdom of God first and not after our own things. You try to satisfy yourself. You try to please yourself first before serving God. You give God conditions of what, the, what you want him to do for you before you can serve him, before you can do his work. No, you don't do that. Seek the kingdom of God first. Try to find out the will of God for your life and try to do it. Try to follow the will of God for your life. Try to serve God in truth and in spirit and leave the rest. That is what a steward should do. Matthew 6 verse 33. Are you a selfish steward? Number nine. Are you a selfish steward? What are you doing with the grace of God in your life? Because you are selfish when you are selling the gift of God. People come for counseling, you collect money from them. People come for deliverance, you collect money from them. People come for prayer, you collect money from them. And you are not collecting money because you want to fast for them and say, okay, because I'm fasting for you, uh, you need to buy provisions. That's one, no sin on it. Maybe you want to do a family prayer for people and you are led to, you know, tell them to buy you provisions to do fasting and prayer. I don't see it as a sin. You can ask them to buy you provision. They can do that. But when you charge money for prayer, you are not a faithful steward. Because Jesus Christ himself never collected any money for all the people he prayed for. All the demons he cast out of many people. He didn't collect money from them. But you today, a lot of men of God today, they charge money to pray for people. They are not faithful steward. And that is why they remain in, at one spot. Because they refuse to wait on the blessings of God to arrive. They refuse to wait for God to bless them. They decided to bless themselves. Because when you charge money to pray for people, actually, you are already paying yourself salary. God is supposed to be the one to pay you salary as a servant of God. And not you charging money. The moment you bring money into, you want to pray for people or do deliverance for them or family prayer for them, you have already taken the reward. It's God that's supposed to reward you initially. But because you charge money, God will allow you to suffer. The blessings that are already close to come to you, He will drive it far away from you because you didn't listen to Him. He didn't, you, he didn't ask you to collect money and you go ahead and collect money and pray for people. Bible says, freely you are giving. Freely give to others. But you collect money from people on your own accord to pray for them because of inconveniences. I know many men of God do that because of inconveniences, difficulties, hardship, lackness. God must allow you to pass through those conditions and situations before his blessings come. But a lot of men of God today, they charge money to pray for people. That is selfishness. You need to be selfless toward Selfless steward, in pain, in agony, in difficulties, at times when you feel like there is no way, do it. It is God that has called you and he is faithful to provide for you. But when you decide to provide for yourself, then the blessings of God will be far away from you because you didn't trust on him. A lot of men of God today, they collect money to do counseling. I witness a place. We are people who came for counseling. I witnessed the Korokoro with my own eyes. It's not even long. They came for counseling. And, and the, the, the servant of God did send them away because they didn't have money. In my presence, she sent them away because they didn't have money to pay for counseling. I'm telling you the reality of what is happening today. Adam, which God are you expecting to bless you? When God has put you in a field to be of help to people and you are charging money. Even when these people did not have money to pay, they didn't have a dime. Who knew whether they even came there on their food? They didn't have money. They, they came on food. They came, they walked there. And you send them away. And you think God would be happy with such a minister? No, he won't be. No. 
God will be disappointed. And such people, if they don't stop, the grace of God will be leaving them gradually. Are you a selfish steward? What are you doing with the grace of God in your life? God has blessed you with such anointing to help people, to help the poor, to set people free from bondage, to deliver those that the devil has put in bondage, but you are collecting money from them. Even when they didn't have money, you force them to go and collect money. No, it's not, it's not right. You are not a faithful steward. I will just give you one more point. And that point is, don't lose your stewardship. Don't what? Don't lose your stewardship. Luke 16 verse 2. Don't lose your stewardship. The grace that God has given you. The anointing of God in your life. The opportunity to serve God that you have. In a right place, at a place where God dwells. Don't lose your stewardship because if you lose it, you have lost heaven. That is my last advice and last point to you. Don't lose your stewardship. As a Christian, what kind of life are you living right now? Don't lose your stewardship that God has given you as a believer. The position that you hold in the house of God, hold it faithfully and hold it on. Don't allow the enemy to take it away from you. The crown that is waiting for you, the reward that is waiting for you in heaven, as an usher, as a worker in the house of God, don't lose your stewardship by complaining. Don't lose your stewardship by murmuring. Don't lose your stewardship by bearing your brother in the heart, which is known as malice. Don't lose your stewardship because of unforgiveness. Don't lose your stewardship by deceiving people. Living a hypocritical life, a life that is not real. Don't lose your true worship by talking against the man of God. And many people are working in the house of God today, but their names are not written in the book of life. Many people are working in the house of God today, but there is no record of their work in the, in the book of record in heaven because of their life. Because of their mouth, because of what they say with their mouth, because of their heart, because of their thoughts and their mind. Don't lose your stewardship. Checkmate your Christian life. Are you truly a child of God? Cross-check your life today and examine yourself today. If you are still in the faith, if you are a faithful steward, don't lose your stewardship. Are you a president? You can still repent now. And begin to do the right thing. Are you a governor? You have the opportunity to repent now. And begin to restitute things. Whichever position, you are bank manager, you are manager in companies. How many times have you embezzled money? How many times have you stolen from your company? How many times have you stolen from your balls? You can see make things right now. Don't lose your stewardship because you will give account of how you live your life on earth. I will end it here. And I believe that this message is going to transform your life. There are many areas I would have touched, but I can't finish everything on this topic. Maybe we'll start and continue another time in another way, in another dimension. And I pray that God Almighty will bless you through this message. Please, before you go, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more. Like the videos, comment on the videos, and share it to all your contacts so that many lives will be saved. As you do so, the Lord bless you. Thank you. For sticking by those that are coming by i appreciate you those that have been here with me i appreciate you and the lord will bless you and in the end you will not miss heaven in the name of jesus bye